Good morning and greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you haven't tuned into your, the wrong channel. This is New Life Crawley. Uh, you have uh, a guest, that is me. Uh, I'm Martin Hoskin. I'm the pastor of the International Church in Skopje, North Macedonia, welcoming you to New Life uh, Church this morning. And I just want to take this opportunity to thank you for all the prayerful and financial support that you've blessed ICS in uh, Skopje and uh, thank you so much for your generosity. Also I'd like to say this is a time then we would have been visiting you as a fellowship and very soon you would have been having a mission trip to North uh, Macedonia to visit us in uh, Skopje but through the Covid-19 everything has been put on hold so I'd like to take this opportunity to greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let us pray. I'm praying uh, from the book of Ephesians. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know that this love surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is, work, that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. And the church said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor David. And I'm going to hand over now to the worship team that is going to lead us into the presence of the Lord. God bless you. Amen.
desperate God and I Surrender 
And it's nice to be able to come before him and to remember the act of him dying on the cross um, to forgive our sins. And we thank God for that. Yeah, thank you, Rachel. The Bible is quite clear that Jesus gave his instructions to his disciples at the Last Supper to remember him. He pointed to his death and his resurrection. And we read in Mark 14 that um, Jesus was with his disciples um, at at the Passover meal and he took a piece of bread and he broke it, he simply broke it and said, this represents my body, eat and remember of me. And that's what we're gonna do now in our own homes. We're gonna pause for a moment and I just encourage you as you eat a bit of bread, it's not a, a magical piece of bread, it's a simple representation of, of Christ's body and what that represents. It represents new life, new birth, hope in Jesus Christ. And at the same time, he took a cup and I'm sure they were drinking wine at the time. And um, he said, this represents his blood, which was going to be um, shed on the cross. And his blood represents a cleansing of sin. And again, as we just pause now, I just want you to just remember what God has done in your life. We can be quite forgetful, have short memories. And let's just, for this brief moment, just remember and thank God what he's done. And he gives us this eternal hope in his name. So Father we just thank you that you came on the cross and died for us. We thank you Lord that your word says all who call upon your name will be saved and we thank you Lord that that invitation is open to everyone. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Hi everybody. How are you doing? Hope you've had a good week. Another amazing week weather wise. So I hope you've managed to enjoy the sunshine. So we are thinking today about the cross. We have thought about it very recently because we've just had Easter, but our Bible reading for this week has been based around the stories of Jesus. And I just asked you how you're feeling. I'm going to give you some situations for you to think about. Because sometimes in a situation, the way that we're feeling can change. And so sometimes during the situation, we feel a certain feeling 
And then afterwards, it can be a little bit different. And I think that ties in with the story of Jesus. So, first thing I want you to think about. Something those of you that know me well will know that I love this. Chocolate cake. If you ate this whole chocolate cake, while you were eating it, I wonder how you would feel. Would you feel happy or sad? I know I would certainly feel happy eating that chocolate cake. But maybe an hour or so later, if I'd eaten the whole of the cake, I think I might start to feel a little bit different. And I think my stomach might start to gurgle, and I might start to feel a little bit sick. And so while it was happening, it was wonderful. But afterwards, I might start to regret it. The next picture, and I know none of you would do this, but if you were having a fight, So there's a picture of two people certainly not getting on. If those two people are having a fight during the fight, I wonder how they feel. Certainly, I think they would feel sad, especially if they're being hurt. And then afterwards, when their parents or their teachers found out and they had to be punished for the fight, again, how do you think they would feel? I think most of you would agree it's not very nice missing your playtime or missing your dessert after dinner. So they probably would feel sad. So we've got an event where during it they felt happy, but afterwards sad. Another event where it just felt sad all the way through. And then the final one is a bit of a tricky one. Because sometimes we have to go to the doctors and occasionally we might have to have an injection. Now injections quite often if they're done very well, won't hurt very much. But during the injection, we might feel a bit wobbly and a bit sad. So I think when we go to the doctors, we might be a bit nervous. But the following week or the following month or the following year, when there's an outbreak of whatever we were having the injection about and we don't catch it and we're nice and healthy and fit, I think that we would feel happy and glad that we had the injection. So that was an event where at the, mo- at the beginning, while it was happening, it seemed to be quite sad. But afterwards, you were really glad that you had it. And I think the story of Easter is a little bit like that. Because when Jesus died on the cross, I think that his friends and those people that really loved him would have felt very, very sad. And although Jesus had explained to them that it was going to happen, I think that they would have really felt that that was the end of something that had been amazing. And so we're going to think about that a little bit now. Now I'm going to try and be clever, which doesn't happen very often, but I know that some of you like making paper aeroplanes. You know who I'm talking about. And so I'm going to try and do a bit of paper folding today while I tell you the story of the last week of Jesus. Because in the Bible it's really interesting how much time is spent telling us about Jesus' last week. And I think that shows how important it is. So we need to make sure that we understand what was happening. So I've got a bit of paper, a bit like a map. Jesus is last week. He decided to go into Jerusalem. And his friends actually didn't want him to go there because they knew that it was dangerous. They they knew that lots of people didn't want him to live. And so they sort of were saying to him, let's go to a different place. Maybe go over here, maybe go over here. But no, he wanted to go to Jerusalem. And when he rode into Jerusalem, when we thought about this in another time, one of our other services, as he rode into Jerusalem, people got palm branches down and waved them and said, Hosanna, and said that he was the king, which showed that lots of people there realized who Jesus was. Jesus rose into Jerusalem and got off of his donkey and decided that he was going to go into the temple. And he went into the temple, but what he saw made him very, very sad and actually a little bit cross because they were using the temple in a way that they shouldn't have been using it. And so he went round and actually told them that what they were doing was wrong. Because of that and because of a number of other things that had happened, there were lots of people that were starting to mutter about Jesus and were feeling very threatened. And so the disciples realised that they had to be a little bit careful And so they found an upstairs attic room to meet 
so that they could have a festival with Jesus. And this festival was called the Passover. And so Jesus, they met up there, hoping that they would be safe up there. And they started to share their meal together. And then Jesus did something that he'd never done before that was a bit strange. He took the cup and he said, every time you drink this cup, remember me, because this is my blood. And then he did something a bit strange as well. He tore the bread that was in front of him. And he gave it out to the disciples and he said, every time you eat this bread, remember me. And so they did realize that something very special but maybe a bit sad was going to happen. And then, a bit later on, after he prayed in the garden, Jesus was arrested. And he was arrested by the Roman soldiers. And these Roman soldiers decided that they were going to break Jesus. They decided that they were going to make sure that he didn't do the work that he was doing and be a threat to them anymore. So they tried to break his body and they whipped him and they mocked him and they treated him in the worst way possible. And then, as we know, because we've just celebrated Easter, Jesus was then hung on a cross and he died. Very, very sad. But... Even though the Roman soldiers, even though some of the chief priests who had tried to stop Jesus doing what he was doing, and even though the devil thought that they'd won and thought that it was the end, we know that it wasn't. Because if we have a look at the bits of paper that I had left when I did my tearing, they spell out a word. And this is the word that shows us what Jesus brought and what he still brings today. Because Jesus came to give life to everybody. And so although the cross seemed a really sad event, actually, in the end, it brought life. It brought life to those people then, and it brings life to us now. And I think that's something to celebrate. So maybe the cross seems a little bit of a sad event, but actually what it brought for us is the most amazing news that we could ever hear. So I hope you like my paper tearing. It wasn't quite a paper aeroplane. I do apologise, Jonathan and Jesse. I promise when we're back at school, I'll make you one that flies amazingly. But let's just try and think about the cross for the rest of the service. Mark's going to talk to us now about the next part of our Bible experience. And we're going to think about the cross. And we're going to think about Jesus and who he was and why he came and had to die on the cross. While we're doing that, some of you I know have been printing out our activity sheets. We've been doing three sheets for you that David's been posting every week. And they're different ages and hopefully they're helping you to focus a little bit while the adults are listening to the message for you to focus on what the topic is. We've decided that we're going to do them slightly different from next week. So I'm actually going to post these sheets to you. I'll try and get the ages right so you get the right ones. And then what you can do is when your adults are sitting there listening to the adult that's, that's doing the sermon, you can go off and do these sheets and really try to think about what's being said and then hopefully come back for the rest of the service where we do the waving and the happy birthdays and everything else. So I really hope that you're finding the sheets useful. Thank you so much for those people that gave me some feedback but we will be posting them to you, so watch out for a letter. Take care, have a really good week, and we will see you soon. Hi and welcome. Thank you for joining um, me today for this short discussion. Um, today I want to ask you, what is the most important question you've ever been asked? What's the most important question you, you've ever been asked? And um, I'm sure uh, during your lifetime you've been asked some, you know, quite big questions. It could be connected to a, a job offer. Would you like this job? It could be even some like a marriage proposal. These are big questions and, um, you know, sort of um, uh, take big answers. And um, you might have seen in the, in the news recently, there's, a, there's a, a guy called Andrew Townsley who was on the game show Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? And... He was asked a really big question. It was the, the jackpot question for a million pounds. He got all through the, the rounds, 14 rounds, and on his final question, he was asked a question about um, motorsport. And um, 
Unfortunately for him, he didn't know, quite know the answer. He did, but he wasn't sort of 100% sure. And um, uh, fortunate for him, he still managed to walk away with half a million pounds, which isn't bad for a day's work. But I think if you asked him today what was the most important question he was ever asked, it's probably that question. And maybe a little, might be a little bit of him kicking himself if he didn't st uh, go for it and go give him the answer. But anyway, I want to talk to you about what I think well, personally for me, and I think for everyone, the most important question they need to answer, and it's connected to a, a piece in the Bible in Mark chapter 8, verses 27 to 29. And this passage, basically, Jesus was with his disciples, and if you know much about Jesus, you know it would have read in the Gospels that he was um, doing his ministry, and he was gathering, he was Got huge crowds of people were following him, just curious of who he was. Who was this man? He was healing people. He was talking really with such deep wisdom. He was uh, showing such deep kindness and love, and he was talking prophetically. You know, who was this man? And I think it would have generated so many different variants of opinions. There would have been people who was just just sold out for who this guy was. Jesus, there would have been people who have been curious and thinking, well, who is this guy? And they have just been watching at the, at, at the wings, sort of forming their own opinion. And it, the Bible says thousands and thousands and thousands of people were, were following Jesus wherever he went. And some of those would have just been watching, like of hearing from their friends and the neighbours, this man is, you need to come and see him. There would have been a few people who were really sceptical and... Um, Maybe you thought, well, trying to catch Jesus out, maybe he's a con artist, maybe he's just, just you know, he, he's doing it for his own gain. So I think in the midst of these multitudes, thousands of people, um, if you've ever imagined being to a football match or a concert where there's thousands of people, just picture that number of people following Jesus, cramming, some people even got on trees to see what was going on. And um, later on, Jesus was with his disciples and he asked them this question, you know, who do these people say I am? And uh, the disciples replied, some say they think you're John the Baptist. Some say you th they think you're Elijah. And others said they think you're just some sort of prophet. Um, and then Jesus turned to his disciples. And bear in mind, Jesus' disciples had given up everything and followed him around. And, and they'd seen him and got close to him. And Jesus asked, to, asked the disciples, asked Peter, who do you? say I am. And Peter answered quickly and confidently and says, you are the Messiah. You are the Christ. Peter recognised who Jesus was. And the question I have for you and, uh, and for myself is, who do you say Jesus is today? That, I think that's the most important question. You may, have, you may have already been asked that question or never even heard of it or even reflected on it, but I think that's the most important important question you'll ever be asked because the answer to it will have a major major impact on your life and beyond it and the, the, the parallel of Jesus day and 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 today this we're in 2020 there's a quite a lot of par parallels really Jesus had huge followings as I said um, in sort of today's speech it would have been almost viral but people have been talking about him and following him and it would have been in the in the, in the newspapers, if it was today, in the 24-hour news media, they would have been following around. And that's not too different from today. Um, there's churches and there's hundreds and thousands and millions of um, people around this world would have heard about Jesus in some form and, and shaped an opinion of who Jesus is. And I, I want to sort of unpick that little, um, a little bit, just very briefly, and what, that might help sh shape your answer today. Some people may just be like those people in the crowd who are just watching curiously and um, just sort of haven't quite formed an opinion, but were just curious, why are these people following Jesus? Who is this man? That could be you today. You might just be thinking, I've heard about Jesus, but I'm not quite sure who he is. And you're just sort of pondering of it. You might be like some of those skeptical people. There was actually religious people at the time who just didn't, they weren't just skeptical. They hated Jesus. They actually went to as far as killing him, and um, uh, so they might, you might be have a sort of real adverse view of, of who Jesus is and, and, and the church, and maybe that's because of that might be born from experiences you may have had, but you may have a sort of a negative view of of, um, of Jesus. 
you may just sort of see Jesus as a seasonal name, seasonal person. Every Christmas you may dust out your tree and there may be a little decorative figure, a little baby which you put near your tree. Um, at Easter you may sort of dust up your sort of decorations again and put out some Easter sort of um, scenes which may be with Jesus on your, some cards you may receive. And I think um, also some people turn to Jesus when it might be your, you know, your your fourth emergency service, when something's going really wrong, you may actually then start to think, oh, maybe I should pray to God and um, have some help. It may just be a curse word you use day in, day out, if just just, just common casualty, you use, if something, you whack your finger or you have an accident, you might just say the name of Jesus as a, as a form of um, just venting your anger. And um, I just want to very briefly share with you that um, 20 years ago, I reached the point, it's th literally 20 years this summer where I reached the point where I wanted to ask that question in a bit, a bit more um, depth. I just finished university and, um, and had a great time at university, but I was getting to the point where thinking, what is my life all about? You know, I, I don't have one of these amazing stories where I was, um, you know, I had a really sort of rough life and I sort of turned my life around. I, I had a very just normal, straightforward life. I had loving parents, I had a fantastic education, great set of mates. Um, my mum and dad weren't millionaires, but they had enough money to take us away on holiday and um, give us nice presents at Christmas, etc. So I had nice sisters, still do. You know, I had, on paper, my life was just really normal and, 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 and good. But I still had this in a sort of lack of peace in my life, I, I kind of just was missing something. And I remember going to a church I was invited to, I'd never been there before in my life, and um, my, my parents were Christians and they went to church and they dragged me every so often. And as I got older, I used to make excuses and go and play football and tennis and sometimes nurse my head after a night out. and. But so I was watching Jesus at the wings and I was just sort of going along with the flow. But I was invited to a different church. I'll never forget it. It was the day of Wimbledon final. I was, I was, I'm a keen tennis fan and I like to watch Wimbledon final. And Pistol Pete Sampras was playing and he was my hero. But I thought, I just felt drawn to go to this church. My friend invited me to go. And um, at, at the end of the service, the, the, the man who was talking just talked about Jesus in real simplicity and just described who he is and he basically asked the question do you want to know him more and do you want to accept him in your life and before I knew it my legs were just walking them myself down the sort of the aisle of this church and I went to the front and I just said yes I do and I was like what on earth am I doing I just had this sudden urge to sort of say yes I actually want what I'm hearing and um, never planned to do that. And to be honest, it was the best decision I ever made in my life. And I still, as a human being, have ups and downs. But I just want to just, just share one more verse on what my answer is. Who is Jesus today? And there's, a, there's a Bible verse in um, Romans chapter 15, verse 13. And I think really just sums up who, what my answer would be if Jesus asked me today who he was. And it, the Bible verse says, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And there's three words there, hope, joy and peace. You may have seen in this sort of coronavirus season we're going through, a lot of rainbows, um, displayed on people's homes and cars etc and it's great and the, the, the rainbow is a real picture of hope in the bible and promise and for me when I discovered who Jesus was my life was filled with hope I knew that no matter what my life was going to go through I had that hope that I had a savior I had a heavenly father and I've got a future uh, beyond this life on earth I believe in an eternal life and I believe that because I've um, accepted that I had sin in my life and I've sought forgiveness, that I have eternal life. And I know these are quite deep things you may be listening to, but that I just, it clicked in my mind. 20 years of hearing this, just something resonated in my heart. I said, this is truth and I believe it. And despite the ups and downs of life, and I know we all have that, 
I've discovered that knowing Jesus in my life, there is joy in my life which isn't dictated on circumstances. It's not dictated on materials or um, those things of the earth. This joy can resonate no matter what circumstances we're going through. And also peace. I, I didn't have a lot of peace. I had a lot of uh, sort of unrest and I was trying to search that peace in all different forms of going out and stuff. But no, I just felt this deep peace. And I, it's really helped me over the last 20 years. You know, I have the times like I'm sure you do where you have lows and highs. But this inner peace that uh, God's saying, I'm in control. And he, he helps me through it. And... I want to just ask you, what is your answer to that question today? Who do you say Jesus is? And you may be a bit like those people who are just thinking, well, maybe is he made up? Is he, is he really real? Was he just someone who lived on this earth? But I would like to encourage you to just maybe find out, spend some time and reach out to this church, reach out to a church nearby you or do your own research. But most importantly, maybe pick up a Bible and read, start reading it, uh, and almost test God, God, if you're real, reveal yourself to me. Pick out one of the Gospels, which is a great starting place. Pick out Mark, or, or Luke, or John, and these give a real insight of who Jesus is. And the other thing is, I want to say, if you might be a Christian, and you might be saying to me, Mark, well, this is nothing new to me, uh, I know all this, but I want you to just test yourself, what is the answer today? And are you living the answer? Because if, he, if you say, well, God is love to me, well, are you actually living and walking in God's love today? Are you walking in his peace? Do you know that you've got that purpose in your life? You might be saying, well, I know he's my creator. Well, are you living like his creation, knowing that you've got a creator who cares for you, that he actually designed you, which means he's given you purpose and, int and, and intent? You might be saying, well, he, he's my saviour. Well, are you walking free of guilt if he's your saviour? Well, as Christians, we believe Jesus came and died and he rose to life after three days. And that, that, that whole process was to cleanse us from sin and to give us an eternal life, to give us that confidence of eternity with him. So wherever you're in today, whatever place you're in in terms of answering this question, I encourage you to reflect on it. And I hope you get to the same place where I did, recognising who Jesus really was. There were some people who continued to follow Jesus and accepted him who he was. Sadly, there were people who decided they had enough and they wandered away. I hope and pray that you'll be like those who continue to follow Jesus, learn who he is and benefit from that deep personal relationship because he loves you. So I just want to conclude in that verse again. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with the hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for listening and I hope you stay safe and keep well during this time and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Well, I'm pleased to have with me uh, one of the members of our church, Geraldine Stanley, who's been very instrumental in, in reaching out to the community. So I thought it would be a good opportunity uh, to introduce her to some of you and to give her an opportunity to explain uh, some of how she come to do this work, uh, a little bit of her history, and, and really the passion that she has for serving people in the community. So Geraldine, we've known each other for a long time, but... Um, I know some of your history. Why don't you share with folks a little bit about uh, your background and, and history and how you come into the charity that you founded? My professional background is in the financial world and in, corporate, in the corporate world. I was very comfortable there until I found out about the power of the Holy Spirit. I found out about the Book of Acts. I found out that it was real and it could still happen. And for more satisfaction, I decided to pursue that, pray into that. And I found myself with a heart of flesh instead of a heart of stone, wanting to do more for the women around me. And so it was 2011 and you started your charity. So just explain that 
because there's a very strong Christian ethos um, to that. Yeah, in 2011, I started a, a community group. This was after I'd had various teachings. And the verse that spoke to me was John 7:38, where his word says, out of your inner belly shall flow rivers of living water. And with that, I thought, oh, that's great. And thought of the rivers actually flowing and giving life to things. And as a result of that, I found out that, and I just felt the Lord was speaking to me, that in every woman there is life waiting to flow. And my heart was about tapping into this life, giving people a hope and a reason for living. The community group started with a few friends, I think about five of us, family members, and we just grew on from there. We had women we've never met before who were referring other women into the community group. And now we're a registered charity, working with more than 40 volunteers, and we've helped more than 100 or hundreds of women and made a difference in Crawley. So bringing it right up to date, Geraldine, obviously we're still in this pandemic and still in uh, COVID-19 and kind of the fallout from that. So recently you, you started a new project, so why don't you explain that to us? Um, the new project we formed is called Chrysalis, and the whole reason is to support the vulnerable, especially women and their families, in this COVID crisis situation. But most of all, the thoughts came from some teachings we had, and the pastor was talking about the butterfly and the cocoon, and we had junior church as well, which we were pleased to join in. And we're talking about the cocoon and what was going to happen after that season. So therefore, I thought with Chrysalis, our logo is a butterfly because we're not looking at the situation we're in at the moment. We're looking at how and when we're going to get out of this situation. And so maybe you could explain to people some of the things you have been doing with, with volunteers from New Life Church, but also others in the community. We have formed a really good partnership with New Life Church. We've got the opportunity to use the building as a base for our charity. And out of that, what we're doing is we work with volunteers from New Life Church. We're working from volunteers from the local community and we're distributing food, we're creating food parcels, giving out food vouchers, sending out top-ups for electricity and gas. But most of all, we're using this building to actually meet with vulnerable people who need to meet with us on a one-to-one basis. Uh, so an obvious question people have is, where can they find out more information? You can go to the website, or River's website, and you'll find out more information about that. Or you can look for us on Facebook. Okay, so I'm a pastor, so an obvious question for me is, how can we support you and, and how can we be praying for you? As a pastor, I think you can continue praying for me for obedience to continue this, for the strength and determination to forget about what other people are saying or what they might think, and to press on, and also to be proud to be different. Because in this situation, we are different because we are not looking at people's financial background or whatever background they've come from. We're just listening looking to give people hope and a future in this crisis situation. So if you or someone you know needs some help, then we're going to put some contact details up on the screen. Please feel to get in touch with us, and we'd love to hear from you. We would love to help you. Uh, We want to serve our local community. One final thing that we want to do, really this is the official commissioning, this is the official launch um, for the work of Chrysalis, working in partnership with New Life. So I'm just going to take the opportunity on behalf of the leaders of the church to pray for Geraldine and the work that she's doing. So Father, we thank you uh, for the work of Geraldine uh, right throughout many years, seeking to serve our local community and those who are vulnerable. We pray your blessing on her as she continues to work in partnership with us as we seek to think of others beyond ourselves, beyond our own confines, beyond our own building, beyond our own circumstances. We release her into all that you have called her to do, to be a blessing to this community. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. 
Amen. So thank you, Jerry Dean. We wish you God's blessings for this future, and we know you'll have great success in what you do. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for being with us this morning. We trust that you enjoyed that worship and, and sense God's presence uh, during that time. We trust you also enjoyed the ministry of the Word from Mark as we focus ar ar around the death of Jesus and then what that really means to us, how we can celebrate that. Uh, straight after this time at 11.30 a.m., we're, we're going to jump onto Zoom where you have an opportunity to have a coffee tea with us, virtually, of course, and um, we'd li like to offer to pray for you. So if you have a, a, a need, we, we'd love to do some prayer ministry with you. The guys that are on Facebook and YouTube will give you some login details. So at 11.30 today, straight after the service, jump on Zoom and connect with us that way. You can also do that on Tuesday night as well. We're, we're working our way through the whole New Testament together as a church and kind of wrestle with some of the questions and understanding that for our own daily lives. So you can join us at 7.30 p.m. this Tuesday night and we'd love to help you grow and learn more about your faith. Contact us by email, through Facebook um, or YouTube and we, we'd love to give you some login details for that. And the final one is if you've been blessed by the ministry of new life, then we want to give you the opportunity to give. We have a new online secure platform through our website. So if you go to newlifecrawley.church, then right on the top right-hand corner, there's a giving page. And if you click on that, it'll take you to our secure giving facility. We're certainly not pressurizing you to give, but we do want to give you an opportunity because Jesus said that where your treasure is, there your heart is also. So if you've been blessed, then you can bless us so that we can bless others as we do that. Thank you for being with us, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.